The interesting part about this unit is, quite frankly, it doesn't make any sense how it would work. I know it's not had a ton of success, but to get a goal, they have Arvidsson playing center, who I know he's done it in his career, but obviously it's mostly a, a winger. Nothing's, I was shocked he won that draw so cleanly. He won it so cleanly. <laughs> and then also they have two left-handed defensemen in Nurse and Neckholm on the point. So it doesn't make a lot of sense how this unit gets together, but I guess when it's you the just leftovers, have... it's just drawing the, <laughs> basically here's the next most skilled guys in the team. We'll put them all in a unit and see what happens. They need to play the second unit more because I mean the first unit gets so much ice time, and when they're cold, they're cold. So give that second unit a go. There's good players in that second mm -hmm. unit that can score. So uh, how would you how would you put the units out there? Because obviously we went through the entire week looking at what the power play uh, lines could be it was what was it Nugent Hyman were off on the onto the second unit with Skidder and Arvidsson which I liked because I thought it gave a little bit of different feel in the sense of like I think Skinner's way more of a net not a net front but like he's really good around the net he's so crappy. is Arvidsson yeah. yeah but you can kind of switch them both and give a little bit of a, a shake here and there but then obviously they just didn't do it until late <laughs> in the Detroit game would you I again I don't think now that we've seen it they're gonna move away from the top unit but it looks like they're going to try and change things up how would you do it would you go some games where you start the second unit for 40 seconds whatever give them the the second the first unit the flow into the power play or you just kind of run into this like okay these guys are obviously going to figure it out yeah i think the thing is is i mean and that's why you want to see more of the second unit is i don't know if it's going to be advantageous to the oilers long term to mm. break up their first power play unit the one that's worked well for what it's been two and a half years since they made the trade that sent tyson barry out to nashville and evan bouchard takes over in the top power play that unit that that group of five has been running together since since then so it's been over a year and a half and i don't think that you know putting a skinner and arvidson in for a few weeks is gonna really make a significant long-term change this is who your top power play yeah. unit is i think you're better off figuring out who's on this second unit and then using them more give them some starts if if those are the players who have the momentum in that game at that time arvidson pod coles and skinner whoever it winds up being and send them out there as the first power play unit for you know if you need that momentum swing yeah so in, in that pittsburgh game the top unit obviously like we said led the way uh Dry Seidel had two minutes 45 on the power play. The lowest from that unit was was Bouchard at 237, and everybody else, the most after that was Ekholm at just over a minute, and then Jeff Skinner at 52 seconds. Each of them had two shifts, so basically getting 30 seconds at the end or when the guys are like, okay, we're done now. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.